What is that? Velvet? Today we'll be going into the fifth episode of the Star Wars Ahsoka Tano series. And with that, there are only four episodes left, and there are still a lot of questions to be answered. One of those is, what is Balin Skull really up to? And his Padawan, Shin Hati. Now, there are more theories out there than I can shake a stick at. And someone did tell me that shaking a stick refers to shepherds who would shake sticks at sheep to get them to move. Okay, cool. Before that, I had no idea what it meant. Anyways, there are more theories out there about Balin's skull in the Ahsoka series than I can even count. I can't even list them all here. One of the big ones is revenge against whatever the Jedi did during Order 66 or some other form of whatever. He wants power or something. And I want to say that these theories are likely wrong. And I'm not saying that my theory is any better or that it's right. It's just a theory. And, you know, we take those with a grain of salt, or at least we should. Don't go into a series thinking, this guy said this is going to happen and it didn't happen. And uh, Star Wars sucks. Well, calm down. It's just a theory. And like in the scientific community, there is no scientific method for these theories. It's just guesses, really. But I am basing my theory off of clues that have been left behind within the novels and with previous Star Wars content. And I know that you all want me to just shut up and get to the theory, so let me do that. But before I do that, a quick word from our sponsors. No, they don't sell me anything. They don't give me any products. They're just fans of the channel who would like their name shouted out, and I'm doing that for them. The first one is Journal of the Scots. The second one is Shane Abbins 6006. And the third one is Mike Martinez 1224. Thank you guys for what you do. I appreciate it. Now, the word. Do you have a wedgie? Don't pick it. Let someone else do it. That way your hands are free to subscribe to my channel. After you subscribe and your booty crack is free of obstruction, thank the one who liberated your rump with a tongue depressor. But subscribe to my channel now and let's bring fun back into the Star Wars fandom. Yes, listen to the squeaky funny voice. About 80% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Can you imagine how big this channel would be if you did subscribe? At least half of you? Wow, we'd be hitting new heights. So, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Now let's get on to the content of Balin Skull in the Ahsoka Tano series. As I said in the beginning, there are a lot of theories going around about this guy, and there's some clues left behind that show that a lot of these theories may be wrong. I haven't watched all the theories, and... God, that would be so hard to do. There's so many. Wow, I can't believe you're even watching this one. Well, thank you for doing so. Okay, before I get into the theory, let's just say this, that there are clues within the Ahsoka series that bring me to a conclusion. One of those clues is how Balin Skull shows regret for how he is assigned to kill Ahsoka Tano. It's sad. She's one of the last remaining Jedi and he feels bad about this. So that tells me that revenge is not in his mindset, that he is not out for revenge against Jedi. Basically, he's been living a life he's been living for about, what, 29 years or so? And he hasn't been wearing Inquisitor armor, so he hasn't been hunting Jedi that we know of. Maybe he has on his own as a mercenary, but they haven't said anything about that. Maybe we'll get more into his story later, but Another big clue comes from the Thrawn novels, the six latest ones, starting with Thrawn, you know, and the Ascendancy trilogy and all that. And I don't think that Dave Filoni is going to retcon those novels. This time, he's been working with Timothy Zahn to get the character of Thrawn right. And I think Balin's skull is a weapon to bring Thrawn back in order to fight the Grisk. And if you don't know who the Grisk are, they're Marauders, a merry band of people who are going around the galaxy just causing torment, pillaging, raping. I don't know about raping. They didn't say anything about that. Maybe that's too harsh. But uh, definitely stealing fruit. I mean, scurvy is a bad thing, and that used to be one of the problems with pirates. It's scurvy and other people on ships. Scurvy! Yeah, so scurvy's a bad thing. I uh, hear. Never had it. But here it is. Anyway, so Balin Skull wants to bring Grand Admiral Thrawn back because he knows Thrawn knows how to fight the Grisk, and Thrawn has the military genius to outwit them. 
Now, the only clue that I see contrary to this is when Balin Skull tells Shen Hati that bringing back Thrawn means power. Okay, maybe that's just a red herring. Or maybe I'm way off and Balin Skull's just a two-dimensional character who's just out to cause trauma. And with Ray Stevenson's passing, rest in peace, sir, then we don't know how far his character is going to go. It, presumably, he would have to end after this season. Or maybe they got somebody else to play him, and I don't know who they could get that's as good as Ray Stevenson. The guy's a genius. But they would have to wrap up Balin Skull's entire story in these next four episodes, and maybe it'll just be a short little glimpse at why he does what he does, but I think we'll get to see that, and I think it, his motivations are to help stop the coming Grisk invasion. He knows about it somehow, probably through Morgan Elsbeth or some other means. I mean, can you imagine it if Hondo Onaka was the one to tell Balin Skull all about it? I mean, Hondo knows about everybody and everything, and he plays both sides of the fence. I mean, all four sides of the fence, really. If you have a one-panel fence, he's on all four sides of it. Yeah, it can happen. It's physically possible. But how sweet would it be to have a Hondo Onaka in live action, finally? I mean, he could even carry around one of the little pig people in a papoose. But I think it would be even more interesting if we saw Hondo Onaka back at the top of his game like he was in the Clone Wars prior to the Empire, putting all these restrictions and taking away everything he had, pretty much. But I don't think the story of Ahsoka will end with this season. Hopefully there's a season two, like the rumors suggest, and it should carry on into the Mandalorian movie that Dave Filoni is working on or was working on until the strikes happened. Come on, guys, let's get our crap together. Pay the guys more money and let's get on with it and give us some more entertainment. More Star Wars, please. And I went off on a tangent there. Sorry about that. But let's get on to Shin Hati. Now, I don't think Shin Hati's motivations are the same as Balin Skull's, even though they could possibly be father-daughter type figures. I think Shin Hati has a much darker side than Balin Skull, and that's evident when she tries to choke out Sabine Wren. Come on, Shin. I don't think Sabine's into it. Never blinks keeping her focus on the target, keeping her anger at such a level. And you can see it in her eyes. She's angry the whole time. Balin Skull doesn't look angry when he's fighting Ahsoka. He just looks like, all right, I'm going to do my duty and do my job and uh, whack, whack, whoop, 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 kick you off a cliff. And I, like I said, I think Shen Hattie's goals are a little darker probably a little manipulative and maniacal. Maybe she even turns on Balin Skull and Morgan Elspeth at one point. I don't think she's in on the secret of why it's so important to bring Thrawn back, otherwise she wouldn't have asked Balin Skull why is this so important. Um, yeah, it kind of gives it away. If the Grisk are the bigger threat, or getting rid of them is the greater good of the galaxy, then Ahsoka Tano has no idea they exist. Otherwise, she wouldn't have said they're trying to bring Thrawn back as heir to the Empire. That's not at all what's happening. Maybe he will lead the Empire, but it's not the sole motivation to take over the galaxy again. It's to gather those forces and fight the Grisk. And maybe even the Empire and the New Republic come together on that. Yeah, I don't know. There's still that whole question of the First Order being evil. But maybe they were just an offshoot of the Empire. Yes, they rose from the ashes of the Empire as uh, one old guy in The Force Awakens said. I forget his name. Oh, why can't I remember his name? Lor Santeca. That's it. Lor Santeca said that. And like I said, maybe it's an offshoot. Maybe one of the commanders from the Empire days took a bit of his army out to the unknown regions and started forming the First Order without the other Imperial remnants. Eh, it's just theory. It's probably a stretch, too. I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're very unified, though. But there is no sign of Thrawn nor any other member of the Chiss Ascendancy in the First Order that we see. Now, who knows? I could make side stories about that, about how they were the ones to gather the forces, but I really don't think that's likely. Now, in the novels, we all know that Thrawn's first allegiance is to the Chiss Ascendancy and their protection, and he knows about this Grisk and how dangerous they are, so 
Gathering more forces only seems right, and Bale and Skull being a part of that in the Ahsoka series really makes sense. And if Balin Skull was a Jedi on the run during the Imperial days, he likely would have known who Thrawn was. Maybe not met him personally, but known of his accomplishments and achievements, there were only a few Grand Admirals in the Imperial military at the time, and Thrawn was the best there was. And if Balin Skull were still considered a Jedi at that time, he would have had fear of Thrawn because he knew of Thrawn's tactics and how well he was at sniffing out opposition and destroying it. So for Balin Skull to want to bring Thrawn back really means something. It really solidifies that there's more to it than what we're being led to believe. But then again, sometimes it's just straightforward and things just have a way of working out on their own without any kind of theory being plausible or even acceptable. So it could be that Balin Skull's just a bad guy who's upset about the fall of the Jedi Order and turned to the dark side just a little bit, just enough to make him a fallen Jedi. And now he's training Shen Hati in the ways of balancing the Force and she's taking on more of the dark side. So maybe that's all there is to it. Could be probably is but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below i'd love to hear it and i do read all the comments even if i can't reply to every single one i do read them all you don't go ignored so keep the comments coming also before i go another quick word from our three sponsors of this video Warning, do not force someone to pick your wedgie. Law of averages suggests that if you ask enough people, someone will do it willingly. Don't forget to use both your free hands to pound the subscribe button. Your booty will thank you for it. Until the next video, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars community can be the only way. Except people who are jerks. There's just always going to be jerks. It's something we have to live with, so. Hello, jerks.